Hi gang, Scott here. Well, Skylum has announced Luminar AI Update 3. This is a free update for current users of Luminar AI. It's uh, If it's not available now, it should be available very, very soon. So you hit the check for updates option in the app and uh, hopefully you'll see that, uh, yes, there's a new update and you can slurp it on down and start running it today. I'll go through the features that are in update three, you know, the changes. This is a pretty light update, to be honest. There's not a whole lot of feature change. There is some things under the hood, under the covers that have uh, improved. And, you know, so it wouldn't necessarily be obvious from looking at, you know, there's not like a new slider or somewhere or things like that. Uh, but there are some improvements. I'll walk through those in this video. I will say that this update is uh, pretty heavy on Sky AI and Sky replacement improvements, so much so that I'm going to do a separate video on the Sky uh, replacement improvements in Update 3. I, I think those will be served a little better when you look at some side-by-side -side things, what happened in Update 2, what happened in Update 3. I'll put a link in the show notes to that video, but I will cover the, the basic changes that have happened, as well as the other things that aren't Sky AI-centric. And as a matter of fact, I wanna start with the non-sky stuff. So uh, if you're not into sky replacement, you can watch the beginning of this and then you can you know, go on about your day. But, uh, one of the first changes, I, I don't know why this wasn't in the product for a long time. Going on down into Dodge and Burn. Dodge and Burn added a softness slider, right? So we get our brush here. I'm gonna make my brush nice and big here with the bracket key. You can see the brush size changing. Well, now there's a, there's a softness, there's a feather. Uh, on this and so as I control softness I can raise or lower that you can see the edge of that brush is changing we can also control that with the shift bracket keys left bracket a smaller softness right bracket a bigger softness and that's a nice change so as I brush through this will be very strong here as I brush through we get a softer fade as opposed to what we used to have which was like you know really kind of no feather and you brush through and, and you get this you know pretty harsh edge and then you're working around with our let me change strength and you know I try to I try to blend it myself well you don't have to do that anymore I undo those things we have our softness slider and we can get a much nicer smoother looking dodge or burn thanks to this softness slider a couple of things for Windows users. If you're using Luminar AI and you're running Windows, there are uh, two improvements. Uh, one is the HEIC format is now supported, so you can take photos from your iPhone in that HEIC format and work on them in Luminar AI on Windows. So that gap is closed. One other gap that was closed, like there's, uh, there's always this little delta between Mac OS and Windows. This one was with the Erase tool. And in update two, there was this addition for being able to undo your erase strokes without having to exit and reset the erase tool. Well, that is now available in Windows as well. And I'm talking about this. If I'm in erase, and let's just say I wanted to, oh, I want to erase something here, and I want to erase something here, and I want to erase something here, and I realize, oh wait, this was a mistake. Well, I can do an undo. I'm doing command or control Z on Windows, control Z on Windows. And I can remove that and I can go backward again, a second undo. That one goes away, a third undo. On Windows before update three, that undo didn't work. You'd have to say, oh, I, I'm gonna just have to, you know, cancel the tool and, and go in here and just reset it and start again. And you know, that was annoying to workflow. Well, now you've got the undo feature if you are running on Windows. One other thing in the, the interface that's changed too is with templates. If you have purchased templates, I actually don't have any on this machine, but if you have purchased templates, can't show you, but I'll describe it, they'll show up like uh, the, the, the browsing experience is better and they'll be available for you in the for this photo area. So purchase template packs would be able to see them here. And I think there's also gonna be some addition where at the end you might get, here you go, view on marketplace. So this is not something I have installed on this computer, but it will link me over to Here's a template pack that's over on the Skylum Marketplace that might work well for this photo. You can see you know, city killers, and we're looking at a photo you know, of a city and a bridge. 
So, uh, you know, Skylum uh, or Luminar AI has made that connection, said, hey, I can take you over to the Skylum marketplace. There might be a template pack that you would enjoy. Uh, now, for, uh, for Sky AI and Sky Replacement, let me run down uh, the basics of what's changed with the tool. And as I said, I'll have a separate video that'll go a bit deeper. The big change in Sky AI is sky orientation and horizon position. Got a little bit of rework and renaming. Uh, we have a few sliders that are renamed differently. The big thing is that the position of the horizon can be changed independently of like the vertical position. Like if I push vertical position, we'll see the sky rise and fall. And you'll notice that I have, uh, I, I see that the physics is correct now. As I push the sky higher, the reflection goes lower. That's, that's great. But then we also have shift in the horizon position. And now we can shift the horizon a little independently from just stretching and squeezing the sky itself. So we have more control about where you ultimately want to position that sky. And then we still have the things like, you know, our horizon, our horizontal position, you know, stretching and moving it around side to side, blending, rotation, and so forth. Uh, in the reflections area, we have one new slider called water blur. You can see I've actually used that here. If I zoom in to this area here, and I'll turn water blur off to zero, you'll notice there's a kind of like those ripples and things here. I actually had a few dust spots that uh, I could use water blur to, uh, to kind of clean away somewhat. I have to do some retouching there for sure. But notice that the blurring, and the reason I did this, is it felt that it matched a little better with the ripples that were happening with the reflection of the bridge and how I have that control here. But also notice as I push this really, really hard, it's only affecting the areas that are being reflected. It is not changing the softness of all of the water. It's really the water blur with respect to the reflection. So those are really the big things in Sky AI. Uh, there is a lot more under the hood that happened with, with Sky AI and Update 3 as well as in general. You know, in general, the application launches a little faster. Uh, if you're an Apple M1 user, you have an M1 machine, you have a native M1 Luminar AI available now. And I'll tell you, it's really snappy. I have an M1 MacBook and it, it runs really, really smoothly. So uh, that is really kind of the, uh, the, the, the sum game here of Luminar AI Update 3. If you got other questions, go ahead and drop them below. And if you're curious to go into more detail on the Sky AI improvements, Check out the other video I've got. Should be a button popping up here somewhere or a little, a little icon. Certainly in the show notes, you can find it. And until next time, my name's Scott Davenport. Have fun.